Good morning and welcome to the show. We're opening up Wednesday, Financial Wednesday, with Vonda the Coupon Queen. Vonda Gaynor, thank you so much for coming back on the show and kicking off our Financial Wednesdays with us. I know we're going to talk about the family budget and all kinds of other things during the show, but for you, you have a plan for pets. I do. Because pet ownership is kind of an expensive endeavor. Yes, it can get pricey mm -hmm. and I have two dogs and a mm -hmm. grand cat. A grand but cat? I, yeah, my daughter has a cat, which okay. I inherited. <laughs> right. So I have two big dogs and a cat, but maintaining the expenses, that can really get pricey. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people do not know that coupons can be used at PetSmart to offset the cost. To go a step further, they accept competitors' coupons. So PetSmart accepts Pet Supermarket coupons. Really? Yes. I did not know that. That's valuable intel. Because when you're looking at pet food or, mm -hmm. or grooming supplies and all the other things that go into owning a, a dog or a cat, you're talking about real money. Yes. And you can shop at a variety of sources to get all that. But if you decide to make pet smart your place, you go in there armed with all kinds of coupons from everywhere. From everywhere. And they can be combined. For instance, on Monday, I went and bought um, a big 30 pound bag of dog food for the dogs. Mm -hmm. And I had two dollar off ten dollar coupons from Pet Supermarket. My total purchase was fifty dollars, Don, but I was able to use five of the Pet Supermarket coupons, which equated to ten dollars off versus just having two. So, Pet Smart, you can find a wealth of savings there for your pets. Wow. Wow, so, and, and it's not just pet food either. No, and that's the other thing. Mm -hmm. The clearance sections for every, ho every holiday that we have, pet owners need to head to PetSmart. Clearances, toys, treats, everything. It's just like shopping at a regular store for humans. Go into like the Go clearance rack or whatever. I yeah. got bones, healthy bones mm -hmm. for the dogs that were discounted on clearance to $1.97. The regular price was $4.97. Wow. So, and the dogs don't know the difference. The dogs don't know the difference. Like, hey, this is yes. a bargain one. I'm not going to chew on this bone. You no, they don't this, care. No, <laughs> you receive the same benefits yeah. at the pet store that you receive when you're shopping at the grocery store or the drugstore. And it's not like you work for PetSmart or No, anything. I don't. I know, I know you go where the bargains are. Yeah, I are. go where the bargains are. Wow, that, that, that's great. So, so you, you, know, you, you have a, a lifestyle that takes a little discipline, doesn't it? Yeah, it does take mm -hmm. a little bit. And because when you're discipline. talking about getting bargains for your pets mm -hmm. as well, I, I mean, th this goes into every facet of your life, doesn't it? It does. And I mean, some pet owners are picky about what they feed their animals. I am. I'm not going to give Onyx and Patches just anything. Mm -hmm. I want them to have the best and to be healthy. And unfortunately, that means I have to go to a pet store. Mm -hmm. So so you care about your pets. You're not going to give do. them any old cheap stuff to eat. No. Absolutely not. But you go for the best? I go for the best. But you get the best price as well when you yes, do all that. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Wow. That, so so everything from pet supplies to food to you name it, you can get it all at PetSmart. And if you got a coupon from somewhere else, maybe a supermarket or wherever, you could use yes. that at PetSmart too. Absolutely. Now, how can we learn more about these money-saving tips? I know you got a Facebook page. I do. You can find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash the coupon queens, Q-P-O-N-Q-W-E-E-N-S. Vonda Gaynor, the Coupon Queen, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. And thanks me. for helping us figure out how to afford these pets we love so much. Thanks. And we'll be right back after your local weather. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Laura Nelson from A-List Accounting, and we're going to talk about your taxes. Welcome to the show, Laura. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> Glad we rehearsed that beforehand. Yes. Uh, anyhow, there are some tax deductions that a lot of people overlook, aren't there? Yes. And what, would, what might some of those be? I know you've got a little list here. Um, well, let's see, let's start with sales tax. Sales uh, tax, I thought that was just a gotcha, you know, when mm. you buy something, you pay the sales tax and suck it up. No, the, um, I, the federal government allows you to write that off, um, especially if you're itemizing, okay? Mm -hmm. So you have to fall within the Schedule A. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, um, you can you can get take their um, calculated percentage and mm -hmm. then if you have large ticket items you can also write those off as well. So a large ticket item like say I buy a boat from Marine Max, a giant boat yes. and I spend a lot of money on it and I yes. pay a lot of sales tax, I can write some of that off or that is, all of it? Yes. 
That, the sales tax. The yes. sales tax. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yes. pretty amazing That's to me right. when you think about it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So yeah. you get to write that off. Um, and if it's your first job, if you move somewhere within 50 miles, mm -hmm. um, further than 50 miles, take that back. Your first job. Your first job. So you're, uh, you have a newly minted BA or BS. Right. And in my case, it would be BS. And uh, you get hired somewhere and you've got to move 50 miles away from where you live now. Correct. All those moving expenses deductible. Correct. As Isn't well that? as 23 cents per mile. Well, yep. that's yep. good to know. Yep. You know. Now, a lot of employees will pay for that move. But that's correct. Some don't. Right. So if you've got to move to a new city, right. you, know, you need to talk to your accountant. Exactly. What are some of the other things, Laura? Um, sometimes people overlook the smaller charitable contributions, mm -hmm. such as if you make a casserole and take it to the church or mm -hmm. children and family or, you know, some so of them. So my casserole is deductible? The ingredients, yes. You know, I, for some reason, and we, we, we give quite a bit. We make donations mm -hmm. to the church. We make donations to Goodwill and yep. Catholic Charities and all that stuff. And we keep all our receipts. But we somehow never really reached the threshold of being able to write that off. Why is that? <laughs> Am I doing something wrong? Um, you should be able to write off your yeah. charitable contributions. Okay, so uh, they were all deductible in, in some yeah. way, shape, or form. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Uh, what else are we working with here? Um, child care credit, you know, when your child goes mm -hmm. to daycare. A lot of people that have the health savings or the mm -hmm. family savings account through their business, not business, through their job, their mm -hmm. work, they tend to um, forget that they can write that off as a tax credit as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you get a credit for child care. There's a child care yes. credit that you yes. get. What, what are some of the usual deductions that people do know about that are just kind of the given? Like the home mortgage deduction? Yes. I mean, that's huge. I mean, that's yeah. for most people. Oh, the interest that you pay on Yeah. It. Yep, yep. Um, your points that come with your mortgage, of course, and then mm -hmm. your... Um, Real estate, let's see, have they taken away the real estate? Um, you have to take away, um, That's and that's all, usually on your itemized, so mm -hmm. you gotta fall within that bracket to get itemization. Um, then you have student loan interest mm -hmm. that you get to write off. Well, that's good to know. If For, for the three people that are paying back their student loans, <laughs> I hope they catch that, you write that off. <laughs> My wife yeah. was one of the only people I knew who paid off her student loans. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Well, we pay them off, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. But if you don't know what you're qualified to uh, take off your taxes, what do you do? See an accountant, I guess, right? Correct. Yep. And you can actually yep. Google it up and check it out yourself, That's I correct. suppose. Yeah. People yep. are a lot smarter now yep. with the computers. You can find it on the internet. Yeah. Laura Nelson from A-List Accounting, thank you so much for giving us some tips on tax time. And I'm going to hang on to this list, and we'll be right back. Yeah, hi, I'm Jeff from Gears here, and I was going to show you a couple things on a, we got a hearse that come in in 2000, and uh, had no fourth gear when we drove it, and that's what the complaint was, and uh, we actually we got on the computer and find out uh, that it had a, uh, a TSB on it, and TSB was actually this gasket on the valve body actually blows out, and uh, you lose fourth gear. They recommend to change the gasket first and see if it fixes. Well, at this point, when you take the valve body down, to fix it, you can look up and actually see the band. And you can see the band in the drum was just, it couldn't hold it, it just kept slipping. So it uh, made sense. So we had to actually get into it and I'm actually put, trying to put it back together here and I gotta get a gasket here to put it on here and uh, actually they should, uh, her should be going and, and be good again. And over here we got a, uh, a Maxima that uh, I got tore down here and actually it's a uh, CVT uh, transmission, which uh, they don't seem to hold up real well, but uh, it had a uh, bad vibration noise, and actually the uh, the bearing, I don't know if you can see the bearing here, is actually pitted and rolling around in there, and it, it made a just a horrible sound when you was driving. It sounded like something was going to try to come out of the side of the transmission, and uh, <clears throat> they're really hard to actually get parts for and build. Uh, some people don't mess with them. Sometimes you just end up getting units because they're so expensive to build. I got a, uh, actually a chain drive in here. Uh, if anyone knew about snowmobile or something like that, it's that kind of clutch that, uh, you know, it, it's variable. It's uh, go up and down, that's how you get your, your speed. And uh, actually we got one Ford coming. Uh, 
and uh, won't mess with it because the damage is so uh, extended that uh, we're just going to get one and I'll use it and let it go. If you guys notice any kind of problems you got, bring it in here and let's check it out. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Heather Noyes from Raymond James Financial, and we're talking about the 12 financial resolutions that you should make this year. Now, we covered six of them already, Heather, mm -hmm. didn't we? We did. Oh, and just a quick recap, what, what were those resolutions? Just a quick, uh, number one, we want to get your balance sheet in order. You want to um, take a look at your spending habits and your budget. Mm -hmm. You also want to look at the titling of your accounts, whether they're joint or single Whose or those in. types of things, mm -hmm. right? Uh, look at your beneficiaries, review who they are, make sure they're correct in the way you want them. Uh, look at your cash, make sure you got enough cash for your um, emergency needs and look at your asset allocation. So make sure that you've got the right mix of stocks, bonds, cash, whatever it may be, that your asset allocation is still intact and where you want it. So. Okay, so now we're halfway through our list. What would number seven? What's All our right. seventh uh, New Year's resolution, financial resolution? So be? number seven is, um, especially if you're retired, you want to evaluate, and even for pre-retirees, you want to evaluate what your retirement income sources are. And there's a lot of different types. There's Social Security, there's pensions, uh, maybe you have some real estate, or maybe you have some loans that you've lent out to people, mm -hmm. um, and different things, I mean, different sources of income. And you want to look and make sure uh, which ones are reliable sources of income that you know are going to be coming in for retirement, and then mm -hmm. those that may or may not be. In the case of like real estate, you want to make sure that, I mean, do you have some properties that there yeah. could be a vacancy that could affect that income? That's sensitive to market conditions mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So you want to really categorize mm -hmm. your income sources and make sure that you've got um, the ones that are reliable are going to be enough to cover everybody your need, and then the ones that may not be as reliable are more there for your extra pleasure, your mm -hmm. travel, your gifts, and things like that. Now, you so. really can't rely on Social Security as a main source, can you? I mean, that's supposed to supplement a retirement, it's isn't it? It's supposed to supplement a retirement, but it's mm -hmm. really interesting to see the numbers on the percentage of retirement income that Social Security makes up. It's really pretty really? sad. So, mm -hmm. so most people are really relying on Social Security. Mm -hmm. And that's not because by plan, it's probably because they didn't have a plan. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they didn't have a plan. It's like, oh, what do I got? Yeah. You, you, you turn 55 or 60 years old and you start thinking about it. Mm -hmm. When should you start thinking about it? You should start thinking about it, you know, the day one that you yeah. get a job, honestly. I, yeah. I started thinking about it in eighth grade, I think. Mm-hmm. Right. Anyway, <laughs> still haven't reached right. my goals. But, okay. Now, what would be our eighth? Uh, the next one is to take a look at your Social Security statement. So, on, uh -huh. so on the uh, issue of Social Security, remember we used to get those in the mail? They would yeah. send them about three months before your birthday and tell you how much, you know, they've got you in for. And if you retire early or 70 or mm -hmm. take it, um, they don't send those out anymore. So I would encourage everybody to actually go to the Social Security Administration website, which is ssa.gov, mm -hmm. and you can sign up to get that. Uh, I actually every just year. did that. Did you? I good. mean, coincidentally, I just did that about two weeks ago. I was, you know, tinkering around and, and, and went out to the Social Security website because I'm like, I haven't gotten a statement in a while, probably a couple of years. And uh, I went out there, got the little PIN number, registered the whole thing, and they're rack and stack. and. Yeah, I'll be working until I drop. So anyway. Well, so. you know, and then the mm -hmm. other uh, thing is that especially for more so for women, they are maybe have changed names and you want to make mm, sure that yeah. it's accurate, that your employment income yearly is being reported and it's being reported accurately. And then there could be some years in there that, you know, were mm -hmm. missed or something along the lines, especially again for females who have changed names. And that's a great resolution too. Get get in the system, make sure your your, mm -hmm. your stuff is accurate with social security. Now my understanding I haven't I haven't reached a full year from actually signing up for mine. Mm -hmm. um, but my understanding is that they'll send you a notification that your new statement is available. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of updated every year is just the way they used to mail them to you. Um, the other thing, you know, you're talking about working forever is that you should review the spousal options as well. There are several different spousal options. So speaking of women, if they've been out of the workforce for a while, mm -hmm. there are some ways that they can actually um, get the value of half of their husbands or ex-husbands mm -hmm. or um, deceased spouses. So I would get my full benefit, right. say, Mm -hmm. I worked to 66 and six months or whatever right. it is. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Cameron would get half of what I get? Yep, exactly. Now, what if she's like five years younger than me? Well, she would want to wait till, yeah, she's 62 so, okay. at least. Yeah, All right. 62. So if I reach 66 and she's 62, mm -hmm. it works out perfect for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Yeah. See, marry younger. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then one more we can try to squeeze in today is uh -huh. to look at the tax efficiency, tax efficiency of your charitable giving. So mm -hmm. you don't want to necessarily give cash, especially if you have securities. Mm -hmm. So if you've got 
um, some stock that maybe that has a really low cost basis and you want to give money to your church or a charity, give those shares of the stock instead of, of cash because cash uh, you're not paying taxes on versus if you went to sell that stock, mm -hmm. then you're going to pay taxes on that sale. All so. right. So, so uh, tax efficiency, right? Social security. Mm -hmm. And what was the other uh, one? Retirement income sources. And retirement income sources. Heather yeah. Noyes, Raymond James Financial, thank you for those New Year's resolutions. And we'll get more from you next week. Great. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. It's time to talk about your family budget with Dan Hines from Hines Heinz coaching. I was going to say <laughs> counseling, but coaching. I need a coach for this show anyway. There you go. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Good to How see you. Doing? I'm doing well. Good, good. Now, <laughs> now we, we got some tips on the family budget yet again. Yes. What do, you, what do you got cooking this week, Dan? Yeah, so what we've been talking about this month is that if you want to have a great 2015 with your money, there are three things you need to do. Now, we've talked about setting a goal. Because if you're not going to, uh, if you're going to say no to going out a lot or no to a vacation, there needs to be something there to say yes. Whether yeah. you're trying to get out of debt or pay off a student loan or, or maybe it is save up for a vacation, that's great. You've got to have that goal. But the second step is budgeting. And the reason you want to have budgeting is just like a football team has a game plan. Is that they come into the game and they say, okay, here's how we're going to win today. Mm -hmm. uh, but things happen in the middle that they might have to change their game plan because it's always something. Like yes, it, it's always something. Absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, you know, the national championship just got done and we've got the Super Bowl coming up. And so it's one of those things where um, we as, as families need to have a game plan as well. And that's where budgeting comes in. Where, where do you start with that, Dan? I know yes. you probably have to do some budgeting triage, I, I suppose. Like, like <laughs> what's the bit. most important thing? Like maybe rent or, or, or mortgage money? You've got to Ooh. put that aside. Right? That, yes, that's a good mm -hmm. question. Um, so really what I found with a lot of my clients is that they say, oh, I already budget. But but really what they do is they take a piece of paper and they write down all of their bills and they make sure their bills are paid. But unfortunately, that's actually not budgeting. That's just paying the bills, which isn't fun to begin with. Mm -hmm. The great thing <laughs> about budgeting is that you take, let's say for February, your family is going to make $3,000 for the month. You take that $3,000 and you give every dollar a name to say, well, we're going to pay the bills, of course. Um, mm -hmm. you, and the first four things you want to pay for are food, clothing, transportation, and shelter. Is that, in that order? Um, pretty much in that order. Mm -hmm. um, it's Those are the four things, and the reason those are important, because clothing, you got to wear something to get to work. Right. Um, you got to have transportation to get to work, whether it's your own car or public transportation. Um, of course, you want to eat and have food. Mm -hmm. um, I actually had one client where uh, she was on Social Security Disability, and she had on her budget, bill, 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 debt, 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 and food. Um, so she was telling her money that I'll pay everyone else first, and then Before I'll eat. I eat, which is well, as Visa could sue mm -hmm. her, but yeah. I'll, she might as well eat because <laughs> yeah. they're not going to get anything. You got to eat, <laughs> right? So you yeah. want to put food towards the top and say, okay, those are the first four things because that will get you up in the morning, that gets you to work, so that you can bring in an income to then pay for everything else. Well, that's pretty uh, a pretty wise tip, I would say. <laughs> yeah, put food right up there, you know, because when you look at you know Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, you right. need food, you need shelter. You do right? absolutely. That's yeah. really that's kind of the base of your pyramid, and then you can kind of work everything up from there. Um, I've also found with my clients that there's a, a couple of different misconceptions when mm -hmm. it comes to budgeting. Um, is that they they think that it's going to be uh, too tedious. Is that it's just you've got to save all these receipts and you've got to keep track of everything and. Some people, like myself, we're kind of nerds where we love those numbers and we mm -hmm. love to keep track of that stuff, but some of us just aren't that way. Um, and, and it's okay because the great thing about technology now is you can have an app like mint.com. It's free and it's by the same people who do TurboTax. Mint.com. Mint.com. Mm -hmm. They do uh, Quicken and QuickBooks and TurboTax. And so they're, uh, the software is really easy to use and it's just for budgeting. Mm -hmm. So if you have online banking, that account will go just get that data. So if you use your debit card at Walmart or Target, it'll be on that account. You don't have to save your receipts to write everything down. It makes things really easy. You know, when you talk about budgeting and you got to put food at the top of all that, does that include eating out or, or is that a whole different category uh, of food? Well, see. Because people tend to eat out yes. and people don't cook like they used to. Sure, sure. And that's mm -hmm. a good question. And that's where budgeting and having your goal come in to say, well, if I need $300 this month to go towards my goal and my food budget's only 300 then you've got to figure out, well, how do I eat with that money? Uh, but it is also important, if you can, to have a little bit of fun. Mm -hmm. Another misconception is that people will think that budgeting 
is not about having fun or you can't have fun. But that's not true. It's your money, it's your plan, it's your month. If you want fun in there, go ahead and put that in your budget. It's okay. All right. Well, you know, it, it is very expensive to be poor. Yes. It, it, what I, what I, it is very expensive because poor people spend more for everything mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. maybe they're taking cabs instead of driving their own car, which is more expensive. Right. Yes. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. they're eating out and going through drive throughs instead of cooking. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, eating at home is. Right. Well, and, it, and if you don't have that transportation, just the expense of time, just trying to get around town, it takes longer to take the trolley than something else. If, I mean, you got to do what you got to do, mm -hmm. but you're right. It does take more time and a lot more energy. So that's why it's even more important that you've got a budget with the few dollars and cents that you might have. Dan Hines from Dan Hines Coaching. Thank you so much for giving us that tip Very on good. our family budget. Thanks, Don. Appreciate and it. And we'll see you next time.